Hello everybody, my name is Mohamed Sadiq, and in this video we'll be discussing left bundle branch block on ECG. This is an example of a normal QRS. For the QRS to be narrow, depolarization must be coming from the AV node through the Hesperganshi system, through both the right bundle and the left bundle, leading to simultaneous depolarization of the right ventricle and left ventricle at the same time. This produces a narrow QRS complex with a small R and deep S in lead V1 and a large R and small S in lead V6. Under normal circumstances, both the right bundles and the left bundles depolarize simultaneously. However, in the setting of left bundle branch block, for whatever reason, the signal is interrupted in the left bundle and depolarization proceeds down the right bundle. The first thing that happens is the normal depolarization of the septum from left to right because of Purkinje fibers inserting to the left side of the septum from the left bundle no longer takes place. And now the septum will depolarize right to left. This reduces the magnitude of the initial R wave in lead V1 and sometimes it's no longer seen, and the initial deflection in V1 is negative right away. As the main vector of depolarization is right to left, and V6 is positive right away. Because the left ventricular septum contains more muscle than the right ventricle, usually the R wave, if present, is very small in lead V1. So in left bundle branch block, even when there is an R wave, it's usually very small and is less than 20 milliseconds in duration, that's less than half a small square. Now, after depolarization of the right side of the septum and the right ventricle through the normal Hesperkinshi system via the right bundle, depolarization moves toward the left ventricle through myocytes, which is a very slow process, as opposed to the Hesperkinshi system via the left bundle. And this exaggerates the overall negative vector moving from right to left. The end result is a broad QS complex in lead V1, and all that means is a very wide, broad negative complex in V1, and a broad R complex in lead V6 which means a broad positive complex in V6, because the majority of the vector is always proceeding from right to left. Here's an example of an ECG with a left bundle branch block. Because of delayed left ventricular depolarization, the QRS complex is widened with a, with a duration of more than 120 milliseconds, so more than three small squares. V1 might show a small R or none, if the R exists, it's very small and less than 20 milliseconds in duration, so less than half a small square, but a broad, deep S wave. And V6 shows a broad R wave, and often this is notched. And in this case, you see the notching in lead V5. Of note, the axis can be either normal, so positive in leads 1 and lead 2, or it can be leftwards, so positive in lead 1 and negative in lead 2. And here's a look at the precordial leads in left bundle branch block. Again, you do see a small R wave in lead V2, but it's very small with a duration less than a half small square. But overall, you get a QS complex in lead V1 and a broad R complex in lead V6. One thing to note with the left bundle branch block pattern is the ST segment and the T waves become abnormal. And you get what's called discordant ST T changes. And when the QRS complex is mostly negative, like leads V1 and V2, you'll get a small amount of ST elevation, usually less than one large square. And when the QRS complex is mostly positive, like leads V5 and V6, you'll get a small amount of ST depression, again, usually less than one large square. This has implications for diagnosing a myocardial infraction in the setting of left bundle branch block, because in patients who are not having myocardial infraction, if they have a left bundle branch block, you have a small amount of ST elevation and a small amount of ST depression that's expected. We will discuss the diagnosis of infraction in the setting of left bundle branch block in a different lecture. Here's some of the associated abnormalities with left bundle branch block. They include left ventricular hypertrophy, left ventricular dysfunction, extensive coronary artery disease, post-valvular surgery or valvular intervention states, especially the aortic valve, or primary disease of the conduction system. There are other causes and associations as well. And here's a mnemonic one can use to remember the difference between a left bundle branch block and a right bundle branch block on the ECG. In lead V1, with a left bundle branch block, you get what looks like a W pattern. And in lead V6, you get what looks like an M pattern. With a right bundle branch block, in lead V1, you get what looks like an M pattern. And in lead V6, you get what looks like a W pattern. And if you remember the mnemonic, William Merrow, where the first letter and the last letter being V1 and V6 respectively, and the L standing for left bundle branch block and the R standing for right bundle branch block, that'll help to remember. Alternatively, you could remember that you get rabbit ears in lead V1 and right bundle branch block. In summary, with left bundle branch block, depolarization proceeds normally down the right bundle. This causes right to left depolarization of the interventricular septum, and the right ventricle depolarizes normally. 
However, there is delayed depolarization of the left ventricle through myocytes rather than through the Hispokinesia system. This widens the QRS, creates a negative QRS complex in lead V1 and V2, and a positive QRS complex in lead V6, with a QRS of more than 120 milliseconds or more than three small squares. Thank you very much, and I hope that was useful.